Good morning and welcome back to the Cottage Farmstead. My name is Nathan Vedette and I'm here with my father-in-law, Ken Kilby, and we're going to be working on putting in our service pole for our well house today. That's some hard Carolina clay. a lot better. <laughs> Just my, oh, let's see, that's pretty fair. Golly. We did something wrong. <laughs> Beautiful. Now we've got to put a second one. It needs to be spaced a minimum of six feet apart. Somewhere about there. Ah. There's cousin Jed drilling for oil on the homestead. One of the most important parts of the, any electrical installation is proper grounding. The code requires that you have two ground rods minimum of six feet apart for any service that you install. This is only a 100 amp service since it is only going to be feeding our well house and the pump and the few pieces of equipment associated with that. But we still need to meet the code requirements. Nathan has driven the rods in. Next we'll hook up the ground wire and our installation will be complete. Okay Nathan, mm -hmm. where are the clamps? Right up here. So do you connect the wire in the box first? <laughs> He's enjoying Mr. Wilson. You need to um, first... Can't get this. You need to be Mr. Wilson. You need to first put the clamps on the wire. Ah, that makes sense. Well, here are the clamps. <laughs> now, grounding is that? This is where you put the ground all the way up right there. You need to get a. Um, So this here is the clamp that clamps the grounding wire to your grounding rods. One issue that we ran into is when we were pounding down the grounding rods, it mushroomed out that top a little bit, so it won't fit over top as easy. Thankfully, we have a persuader here to hopefully just tap it a little bit to see if we can get it on. Yeah. 
So you can see white flags that we had staked all the way along the wood line. That is the proposed area where we're going to have the wire trench from our electric co-op. As we move up this way, you can see the white flags bleed to an orange stake. That is where our transformer box will be located, uh, which will then feed both of our houses, the barns not too far, but then more immediately, our, uh, temporary, or our pole over here, which will be for our well house. And the distance from where the orange stake is to this pole here is very short. We did that purposely as the longer the distance, the, either the heavier gauge wire you had to go for the power draw, and the more expense you might incur. So we try to keep it as short as possible, and then also have this placement uh, in place mindful of wh what we want to power with it. In particular, this is going to be for our well, which is the orange stake behind me here. So everything is within about 20, 25 feet of each other. That way we can run very short distances. It'll be easy to get that wire underground and be very functional for whatever purpose we have. Well, this here, we have a meter base and this is going to be for our well house. And attached to it down here is an external uh, weather sealed outlet. That way we can, whether it's the power tools for the work site or for plugging the well in, whatever it may be, uh, that was required for this. So, but one important thing is first and foremost, knowing the functionality of the electrical box that you need on site for your own homestead. So figure out with your electrical company, whether it's a co-op or whoever that may be, what is required pertaining to permitting and all that. So we got this all done to the specs that our electrical co-op uh, specified. Oftentimes, they'll just give you a printed out sheet of what all is expected and required. And then as long as you follow those guidelines, you should be good with permitting with your county office. After that is form. Functionality first, but then you want to make it look pretty because once you put this in, especially since this will be the meter for our well, you're, we're going to be looking at this for many years, so making sure that it looks pretty. Uh, we did extra details such as making sure it's nice and level. For the, the le more level it is, hopefully the better longevity we'll get. And we just got, did you cut these posts or did you buy them like that? You cut them? I cut them, yes. Cool. Just little details like that can make something that would otherwise just be there, actually look aesthetically pleasing. Anything to add, Mr. Kilby? Uh, you covered it pretty well. The main thing is just to make sure you coordinate with your local power utility and your county uh, and building codes and electrical code division. Make sure that everything meets the code so that it goes good with the inspections. And uh, of course, this is a weatherproof uh, meter base and breaker panel combination. So that's very important. You've got to make sure that it has a proper rating. And then here we have breakers for the outlet and the well pump. And this one came with the main disconnect, which is not necessarily uh, required, but it's what they had and that's what we got. Another thing to be mindful of in these strange times is uh, scarcity. It was a bit more challenging to find this panel. We weren't able to find it just at your Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, so make sure, especially if you're wanting to be on par with when the electrical company is going to be digging that wire in, to have your materials on site before they're uh, slated to come out and start their work. That way you know that you can get your part of the job done before they come out. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you subscribe below. We'll have many more videos coming up. And have a wonderful day.